What's up, what's up, what's up? It is 8 o'clock and it is Two Bro Smoke coming back live. Gonna try to bring on Masonic Smoker. Uh, tried to get him on earlier. He was a little busy, so I talked to him. He's gonna get on now, he says. So let's let the uh, room populate. He should be popping up here in a minute. Got him right there, so he was checking in with me. So yeah, we're glad to be back with another episode, in-depth breeder showcase, interview, whatever you want to call it. I'm your host, Timmy Turner. The place to be is over at the uh, Two Bro Smoke YouTube. That's where we post all the uh, best content. We also have a Facebook. Check us out over there, Two Bro Smoke, of course, you know. So uh, get with us, you know, link us up, add us. We're just kind of a new podcast coming out, doing you know a lot of breeder interviews, like I said, and just trying to see you know where we can take it in the cannabis community. Wait, to some of our viewers here. So yeah, just giving him a second to jump on. I told him I go on right at six his time. It's eight my time. I already did my show announcements. If you uh, missed those, I did a live earlier. Had some show announcements, so go check those out. Yeah, I'm new to the whole uh, Instagram thing. We're just starting to get this account really uh, pumped up, you know. Trying to make a little appearance over here on Instagram. We started off on the uh, YouTube, of course. But yeah, just trying to get it going over here. This is my second live. So yeah, I'm looking, but I don't see anybody. I haven't got any requests yet. There we go, there we go. Sent. Hey, what's up, dude? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Cool, man, cool. Oh, you got your cat. I got my cat, too, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, he loves me, man. He, nobody really sees him, but he sits here with me when I do these little shows and stuff. Yeah, he's, he's my little buddy, man. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I, I'm glad you got on. So, uh, how you been? Right here, man. I just bit my fucking cheek. So, that just <laughs> happened, like, not even 40 seconds ago, probably. Oh, man. Yeah, bad way to start it off. But, you know, hopefully it gets better. I was eating beef jerky, so now it tastes like blood and beef <laughs> that's a new strain yeah yeah that's that wilderness stuff there so uh i i caught you checking in on the garden earlier man it's looking real nice over there oh that i guess that helped for your interview too yeah yeah for sure yeah i was i always check you out every time i see you on you know when i can you know i try to peep in see what's up you know i like to you know entertains me to see what you got it going on man all the way over there in compton that's something else yeah i like it too because you got it raw in the backyard usually everybody's in little tents in a basement or something like you're just like right out there in the backyard with it you know it looks like a jungle man really awesome yeah man i live in the most southern point of the emerald triangle <laughs> sweet yeah, yeah perfect place you know as far as atmospheric conditions go yeah, man, the, the the gunshots, they really, like, they really, like, decreased the osmotic pressure in the air, you know what I mean, with all that sonic boom going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, bro. <laughs> it's wild yeah. out there. The helicopter blades, they they make the plants stronger when they, when they you know, they, they, they kind of, they get low on the crop. And the plants just kind of just, uh, and they just brace themselves and they thicken up like that. And that translates into the progeny from the seed stock, you know, that's being made at that plot. You know, it's gun gunshots and helicopter blade. You know what I mean? Like it's literally strains that can survive war. 
Facts. Facts, man. Yeah, I totally feel you on that, man. So uh, I know you've been interviewed a bunch. You know, you told me that straight up when I talked to you the other day. So I'm going to try to bring something a little different, you know. I <laughs> feel like my show is all about trying to get people to get to know people, you know. And I know you have a big voice, and I, I'm real honored to have someone, you know, of your status on the show. But, you know, I'm trying to, like, you know, get people to get to know you. You know, that's what my show is all about with a little sit down, chill out with them interview type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, G. So uh, tell me, I know that, uh, you know, one of your, your passions in life, obviously, is uh, cannabis. And you started smoking real young. So uh, tell me, what, what's the first time that you smoked? You got a cool story behind that? I feel like that's something not a lot of people might have heard. Nah, man, it's not that crazy, G. Honestly, the first time I smoked, uh, I, I got some weed. It's, it's, it's cloudy. Like, man, you smoke enough, you forget some shit. But, uh, like, I, I rolled it up, and I didn't crunch it down, crush it down, and the nugs just kind of fell out of the joint. And we didn't get high because we just combusted the, the paper. But then yeah. uh, after that, we went and, like, I bought – some shake off some dude named Javante, you know, ninth grade. And we went home, built a gravity bong and we were rippered. It was, it was a wrap after then. Oh, cool. Cool. So you started really smoking, smoking with the grab then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like the first thing. And then, and then like we talked to my neighbor, Johnny and he's like a, a, a kid from the neighborhood right there where I grew up and he put us on to stress and rolling it in a, swishers and shit so you know we transitioned to that but yeah yeah i, I grew up in south central los angeles so we we, we smoked hella brick weed we called it stress and okay uh, we would roll it up in a like swisher sweets optimos not regular swishers but uh like grape swishers and then as as we went up the ladder you know we smoked better things you know of course now we're smoking hash and shit yeah, yeah, for sure. Sounds like you kind of grew up like me, you know, making all the crazy, you know, devices when you were a kid and then pretty much going to blunts right after. That was, that was us growing up, you know. Seemed like every time people would come around, we were rolling up two or three at a time, you know. Yeah, man, I, I went I, I went right to blunts. Uh, we got, you know, we, we, we built a couple gravity bonds, but eventually we're like, all right, like, this is like, it's hard to hide this every time, like, because we were hiding it from our parents as well, so. We're like we gotta smoke blunts and shit. What Lord, was it like in California when they finally like legalized and everything? Was I bet that was like crazy, you know, like when the stores started popping up, stuff like that. Well, uh it was more so like when I turned eighteen and I was able to get my medical card and go do whatever I wanted. But even then, like I didn't have money. Yeah. So it's like piece up with a couple of homeboys for an eighth. Every now and then you get a, your own eighth and, you know, real, some yeah. hood shit, bro, like some real hood shit. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, that's pretty much how it is, you know. Whoever's got the eighth be smoking. Whoever uh, whoever knows how to hustle knows how to hustle. And, you know, uh, it's kind of – it's it's weird. I, I don't even know how to explain it, G, but, like, I've been in a – I've been in some sheds waiting for a sack of weed with like a dude on crystal meth giving a lady a tattoo on crystal meth. Like I've been in some weird places just to get my weed G like it's, I've been in a place where we knock and there's cameras and we get in there and there's some dude named spider who just got out of jail and there's crack on the table. There's Coke on the table. There's ecstasy. There's a couple guns and there's your Kush. And like, that's just, you know, and then now it's like you go to cookies and you get a, a free joint and a kiosk to buy yeah. your weed. Yeah, times have definitely changed. I, I totally know where you're coming from in the hood shit. I come from the south, so it's way different over here. But uh, it's a lot of the same stuff, you know what I mean, no matter where you're at, you know. So I, I've definitely seen that crazy stuff you're speaking of, you know. But uh Tell me, uh, I, I seen in the other interviews, your dad gave you a pound of weed when you graduated high school. That that was just like something that stood out. That's dope, man. Tell me about that. I mean, I uh, my that was what I liked to do in high school. My parents could never uh, talk me out of smoking weed, and 
all I did was smoke weed. I didn't really care for cars or clothes or a trip anywhere or anything. Like all I like to do is smoke weed and chill. So when I graduated high school, they bought me a pound of weed and I kind of sold it and fucked it up, fucked up the bag and went right back to regular life and learned that I really fucked that up early on. I could have made something more of it, but I just bought shit. You know, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, you got to reinvest, bro. Yeah, sure. gee, I didn't know $4,000 is a lot of money, and my dad set me up to make some money, you know? But, like, it's not it's not like every typical family. Like, I doubt all 42 people, probably some growers. There's a lot of growers in here. Yeah, they're like, man, my dad fucking, I've been growing pots since I was eight. But, like, dudes in the hood and shit, like, it's not your typical household. Like, hey, fool, like, here's some weed. Like, get your shit going, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's something that really stood out. Like, the way it is with me and my dad, he doesn't straight hate weed, but he doesn't like it either, you know? So yeah, like, it, it was some fire, me. bro. Somebody asked if it was dank. It was some sour diesel, straight kill, like, best weed. To this day, it's still really fucking good weed. It was really, really fucking good weed, trust me. And and, and what's funny is, what it's not funny what's, like, the full circle of life and the world is really small. Like the dude that sold me that he's the dude that kind of made it okay for my dad to let me grow and just go into the weed world. It was Ray Naranjo, rest in peace. And so he passed away. I get into the weed scene. I meet his brother through Instagram. Like I'm, I'm going, I'm looking, I, I had known his brother already like for like a couple months on Instagram. Cause he was on future cannabis project. And uh, he's a Mexican. And I just, like, gravitate towards my people. You don't see too many Mexican anything. So, like, I see a Mexican hash maker. I'm like, dope. Who's that? I follow him. And it turns out he lives down the way. Uh, months into me following him, I'm looking at his stories. And he's all, like, posting pictures of him and Ray. And I'm like, whoa, oh. like, that's Ray. Like, rest in peace. Yeah. He's like, that's my brother. Damn. Yeah. So the Small dude that world. taught me how to grow and, like, made it okay, like, broke the stigma. Uh, for my parents, his brother I met on Instagram later on in life. So have you linked up with him since? Yeah, yeah. I I, I link up with uh, – he, he's gone to the store a couple times. He's growing my big banana god right now. He's growing uh, papaya god right now. He's a dope-ass dude. His name is uh, Live Bubble Hash. A couple of these dudes might know him on here. Cool, yeah. Everybody jump over there. Give him a follow, man, for sure. Yeah, that's the, that's the OG right there, you know? Cool, dude. So what was that like, you know, getting to learn how to grow at such a young age, you know, being pretty much let to go into the game like that with all the support behind? Well, you? I'm like, I'm like 18, 19. And I didn't like I, I got taught really remedial tech, like uh, big pots and dirt, throw it outside, grow it. Like it wasn't like a like a big like, oh, like come to the facility. You know, this is how you pH. This is what you want to feed. It was more like. You do half miracle grow, half steer manure, 50-50 mix, throw the clone in there, fucking let it ride out from April all the way to November. That's how he taught me how to grow. Yeah. Well, that works, though. I mean, you know. It works, but that's not how you want to grow. That's not how you want to grow. Like, yeah, not like, optimally. No, Like, that's a way to grow, but you don't want to feed that hot mix. Like, there's better ways with the access of info, all this other stuff. Like, you learn. And don't get me wrong, like, much respect to my mentors but you know you get different teachers as you go yeah 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 definitely well you never quit learning you know that's what i've learned with everything like every day even i read something new you know it's like i think i'll try that next time you know yeah that, that that's for sure but the thing is we get comfortable with our system when it works so people don't aren't open to anything they're just like it works like why would i go listen to future cannabis project you know and listen to these guys and their perspective and they're, you know, two cents because you're fucking Ron Swanson at Home Depot. You don't need nobody to tell you anything. So it's yeah. just, but it, it, yeah, learn every fucking day, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. So like, I like it with you because like you keep it real. You used to work at Rite Aid, correct? Yeah, man, I worked at Rite Aid for five years. I was a pharmacy technician. I was a pharmacist helper, not a pharmacist, a pharmacist helper. Yeah. Yeah, see, I come from that working background. I was an auto mechanic. That's My dad was an auto mechanic, raised me to be an auto mechanic. So naturally, 
just what I guess I had to do in life, you know, starting out. And since then, I've actually, I do e-commerce. I do a lot on the internet, you know, now. But uh, up until a couple years ago, I didn't go independent, and I was actually still working as a uh, mechanic. So I feel you on that, you know. Uh, can you give me a glimpse into what life was before, you know, you ever really started getting out there with it? I mean, it was just pretty regular, you know. I actually... Before Instagram, I just had my friends, like my real friends, you know, from high school and shit. And we would get together and smoke weed and drink beers. And I would talk about my little plants at the house. And that was the people I would entertain. And they'd be like, you're crazy. You grow pot. Like, you're always out there. Like, that's what you do. That's what I identify as. So, you know, I was always the weed grower slash smoker amongst my friends to this day i've never i've never changed and uh so that's who i was before instagram i was always a fucking i've always had plants in my backyard at the same fucking geographical location i'm still at i i always smoked hella weed i always was a man of the culture you know uh and then instagram came along and i kind of just got open to like the world of weed via Instagram and I just I soak up like a fucking sponge and I, I apply game and I just do what I gotta do man that's 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 what it was before Instagram if that's the question I'm sorry yeah, yeah that was the question bro good description on that you know that's that's pretty much what I'm trying to do with little shows like this you know just trying to trying to get out there make a little name for myself do what I can in the cannabis community you know Cause me coming from the South, I'm not from a legal state, so I can't do it like you per se. You get what I'm saying? So I got to do what I can. So doing this little interview show is my thing. You know, I think I might have found a little niche, you know, just to get to know you guys and get out there in the industry, you know, and I'm real, I feel real privileged, you know, to get to do this. And it, it's nothing in the world I like better than just jumping on and pretty much bullshitting with cool dudes, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, you got, you want to ask me some questions. I'm always on live. Might as well make something of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me uh, more about like when you got started. Uh, how many years ago did you start Masonic Seeds, you know, like uh, as a business? And tell me the uh, the steps you took to get to where you're at now. Uh, Masonic has been like around for like three years, four years, probably. You know, it's pretty young. Four years, probably. Yeah, like four years. It's been around. I just be bullshitting, man. I be playing around. People think it was like it was a meme page slash grow page turned into I got dope as fucking seeds. People start to gravitate towards it. And uh, I found like a de people demanded something from me, so I made it. And uh, I grew tons of pot already, so I was like, might as well do this. And, and people were like, no, you're crazy. Like, what are you going to do with all those seeds? Well, you know, do what you got to do. Give them away if I have to. <laughs> I don't care. It's, you got a long life ahead of you. You know, who knows what will happen. But, uh, yeah, gee, fucking like four years probably. Probably longer. Honestly. Nice, yeah. Yeah, so yeah probably like pretty quick, you know like relatively quick because i think like you're up there you know now like people are just dying to go get your next drop kind of deal you know what i mean so uh, I think I, it's, it's it's been a long time g like five years ain't quick g is just quicker than others you know like i've been yeah. around probably one year less than some other people you know true true probably longer than some bigger people probably yeah. like like as namesake wise I've probably been around longer than some bigger people. So, uh, so tell me, who are some of the people that you're working with? I know you work, I think, with Ivan, with the Jungle Boys. and Yeah, uh, man. Burner. Shout out Ivan. Burner, Ivan, Be Real. So tell me about your networking. Like, who all, who all is your crew? Like, who do you claim? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Ivan's my boy, man. Ivan, I, no, no, no. Ivan is not my boy. I don't want to say it like that. Ivan lets me live. <laughs> 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 no.
No, shout out Ivan. Ivan's good, man. Ivan's been watching me for like as long as I've been around and he's always acknowledged my presence as far as, you know, whatever the case, like we're both from LA, so he gets it. Uh, whatever. Ivan, shout out Ivan. Ivan's like a fucking, you know, he's, he's doing like bigger, better things, whatever the case be. Ivan's, I respect Ivan highly, highly respect Ivan, but, uh, he's not, he's, he's a good guy. He, he did a cool thing with that Fool's Gone Wild video promo. That was hilarious. Like, sometimes I don't know if they're laughing with me or laughing at me, but it's okay. As long as I'm getting paid, I'm fine, you know? They're not paying me anything, by the way. But, like, as long as – I don't know. That, that sounded stupid. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes I don't know if they're laughing with me or laughing at me. But I think they're laughing with me because I'm not stupid because I I know. I know what I'm doing, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, anybody else that, that you want to shout out that you work with? Nah, man, shout outs. They got to pay for those, man. Shout out Oni. Shout oh. out Oni. Shout out Piff Coast. Shout out Beacons, Beans. Bro, I'm, like, kind of high right now. Shout out. Hell, yeah. Uh... Shout out, shout out everybody, bro. I'm gonna go down the list. I right? I'm gonna show you the shout out list. Do it. Right now. I made a shout out list. I I knew somebody was gonna ask me. Give these dudes a shout out, bro. My phone don't work no more. There we go. Shout out. Shout out Oni Seed Co, Exotic Mike, Soulfire, James Loud, Sunleaf, uh, Gage Green Group, Don's Genetics, Weed Over Everything, Cactus Jack Originals, Garden State Genetics, Sun Grown Mids, Mackie Morta, I Bean Poppin', Long Beach Reaper, 5150, King Nug, Big Pond Genetics, Bead Seeds, North Coast Genetics, CPT Genetics, Vegans Beans, Dynasty Meds, Hash and Flowers, Budding Gardeners, Dab Father Labs, 808 Genetics, Stony Reaper, Stinky Jeans, El Mexicano, the Ranch, Piff Coast, High Grade Herb, Ohio Organics, Rich Port Genetics, Create, 503 Dabber, Harry Chronic Jr., Hummingbird Hills, June 6 Genetics, Green Fairy Seeds, Goat Grown Grass, Dummy Grow, Signature Seeds, Mountain Men Genetics, Oro Verde Vida, the STB Collective, Guiding Gaia, Hill Country Crops, Crop Circle Genetics, Hash Farmers, Gunja, Dopey Genetics, 12 Citizens Cannabis, Golden Lion Genetics, Consumed by Cannabis, Pacific Northwest Roots, Smoke Hanja, Weed Should Taste Good, Russ Brandon, Fire Seeds, Ghost Genetics, Dr. Evergreens, Captain Planet, Stone Ninja, Bliss Genetics, Kill Zone Seeds. Hell yeah. That's what's shout up. out all You're those ready motherfuckers. With. All right, my turn. I'm going to throw some shout outs in. I got my boy Mike Camp, Honeycomb Hydro. want to give him a shout out. I got uh, Gobsmack Genetics, had them on the show. Want to give them a shout out. Brett Anderson over at Heart and Soil. Big shout out to him. I got to give my boy Gardens by Gilf. He's a big fan of yours, dude. Definitely want to give my boy Gilf a shout yeah, out. Gardens by Gilf. Gardens by Gilf. <laughs> You've seen him, dude. I'll be watching. I'll yeah, be watching. Yeah, dude, I love Gilf, man. That dude, man, that's my number one. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he, he holds it down up there. Hey, yo, shout know. out Megazon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Honorable I'm mention. On hydro today. Honorable mention. Nice. So uh, let's talk about your free seed day right now, because I'm a big comic book fan. So I, I know exactly what free comic book day is, and I've, I've been out there, and I love free comic book day. And when I seen your little ads, dude, I was like, oh, shit. This is the one thing that is better than free comic book day because it's free seed day. And it just blew my mind. So uh, throw, throw some info out on that, man. Yeah, uh, free seed day is going to be the second weekend, the second Saturday of every September, if God lets us every year from this September. From this second Saturday on this September, moving forward, Every day to the day we die is going to be free seed day. So it's going to start two Saturdays from now on 9-11 is when the first free seed day lands. And 
we're going to give out free seats, point blank, period. We're going to give out free seats and whatever the fuck you want to think of it. If you think, you know, they're giving out free seats for promo, sure. It's true. Everybody's doing promotional. It's not for nothing. Yeah. If, if, if you're doing it, oh, they're giving out free seats just to give out free seats, you're damn skippy. You can grab your bag and go home and never communicate with anybody that you've ever seen there again because that is the sole point of free seed day. But that is not the point. The point is to support one another and do the thing. We're putting, you know, promo product placement, so on and so forth, even for yourself, the people that donate to the, the gig, small, big, tall, exotic mic, all the way down to, you know, ABC123 Genetics. Everybody... You know, that's what we're there for. We're there to support each other. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, free comic book day, but for seats. Yeah. You think ever you might take that nationally if other people would do a free seed day and like, you know, just like free comic book day, like every comic book store has it. You think you might I, ever uh, link up like that? It, it would literally have to be like a, that's huge, you know, like yeah. nationally, like that's big. That's a lot of logistics. That's a team. I'm I'm big. Like I know how to do shit, but like that's big shit right there. Like we would need the big like the big dicks, you know, the 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 the, the head honchos to really break out for everybody. I ain't got no problem with that. It's it's, it's you know next year maybe maybe next year this year we did a hundred packs right. Next yeah. year next year uh, the big breeders maybe they can allocate a thousand packs each big breeder or two thousand packs. 2,000 times three seeds in each one, you know, 6,000 seeds per big breeder, probably 10,000 seeds. And then we would have to find some type of Masonic free seed day representative and, 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 you know, coordinate that before all that happens from Colorado to Oklahoma. Like we'll hit the big weed places, you know, yeah. New York, you know, uh, Illinois now. A lot of places are, 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 are letting grows happen. So uh, we would have to do that. Like we would have to put everybody on board and, and the important seeds are like the exotics, the caps, the compounds, you know, shit like that, you know, but like the, the not that I don't have enough big breeders on deck, but like we need like more big, big breeders on deck and we need more stock from them in order to satisfy nationally. And I'm on board. Like I got 10,000 seeds I can allocate once a year for a free seed day. Now we have to get everybody else on board. You know, it's not a lot of beans. 10,000 beans isn't a lot. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of just people wanting to work with each other. That's another problem. People don't want to work with each other. You know, ego, he sucks. His genetics suck. Why would I work with him? Why would I put my name next to his? And, and it's, you know, whatever, like, it's not for you. This is for the people you're, you're, you're like kind of snobby and shit. You go cater to your people. I'll cater to my people. That's it's, Everything's not for everyone. You won't see the motherfuckers buying Louis V bags at a Nike discount store. You know what I mean? Or maybe you will, but you get the point. Like, everything's not for everyone. I just try to, like, I just try to be cool. Like, I, I, I'm i I'm not too cool for school. Like, I'm, like, if you're cool, you're cool. Like, you don't need money to be cool. Some people think yeah. you need, like, to look presentable to be cool. Yeah, just don't smell like shit and, like, you're good. And that's it, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you know, I believe in the law of attraction. So let's go ahead and call it, you know, into existence. Call it out now. You know, I think that people need to get with you. You know, if they see this video, they need to get with you. I'm going to go ahead and say next year it's going to, what, be 10 times more? Let's go ahead and call it. Let's say 10 times. Yeah, man, that's that's what we're aiming for. And, and uh, I, just, I just don't like to, uh, I, I don't know, like, I expect the least. Cause I don't ever like to be disappointed, but don't get me wrong. I work for the most, but I expect the least from people. I don't like to be disappointed. That's why I'm never disappointed. Cause I never expect anything from anyone. Yeah, never disappointed. Sure. The, the way That's I always how... looked at it was like, you shoot for the moon. Even if you fail, you land among the stars type deal. Yeah. G always straight up. I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing, not disagreeing. Just like, I already know the deal, you know. I already know how these guys are. I already know how a lot of these big guys are. That I gotta, I gotta really like become a whatever. G, just I just gotta work, 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 work. Whoever wants to be part of, it, wants to be part of it. Whoever doesn't, I don't want them to be part of it either. So, sick, sick, dick. Yeah, I feel you, dude. 
So, like, I like your whole concept of the force collabs. Like you were saying, not a lot of people like to work with each other. You're like the master of the force collab. You want to elaborate on any of that, man? Because I love that concept. I mean, it was already being done. I just put a name to it. You know, people are already mashing up people's genetics and, and releasing them to the public, even going as far as renaming them. I just, I just don't have time to be asking. I do have time. I just don't care. So I, if I bought the seeds and I grew them out and I crossed them to Wilson, it happened. And, and it happened to another 9,999 strains too. There's some that I'm like, oh, like, that's cool. And I'll reach out and motherfuckers don't care, man. It's just, I just stay in my lane. Try not to, don't get me wrong. Like, I do have some, like, I'm cool with everybody, obviously. I got 66 breeders plus, you know, I'm, I'm cool with compound. I'm cool, like, cool on instagram like they're not they're not like fuck masonic he did a blue agave he did a a tiger bomb he has a apples and bananas like no they know i have all this stuff i've posted it before and they i'm in their good graces powers up i have a gary payton uh, clone that was brought to me through a bird i have a a gary payton bag seed and i and, and i call it that and i'm in the good graces of powers i'm i'm not like malicious with my intent i'm just real with it I pop so many seeds. I can't go ask. I will literally be like this in a line with every breeder going off the fucking checklist of all the shit that I pop from them. Like, Oh, is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay? Is this okay? Is no fuck. No, it's just, just keep pushing on to the next one. If we want to work something, we'll do an official collaboration where it's thought out and we're like, Oh, why do you want to cross it? Oh, I think it'll, you know, bring out the resin content, but at the same time, keep the cherry. Like, whatever you can do that too but yeah. for the most part i'm doing the masonic shit too and it's just fucking pedal to the metal crossing shit fucking keeping whatever's good uh and on to the fucking next one you know because uh it's 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 masonic not may slow down for any motherfucker you know yeah 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 i feel you so sonic means you're fast man i like that yeah i mean it just kind of happened the universe gave me that name and it fit yeah, yeah, I told you, you told me that yeah, you were taking a shit when you came up with that. Yeah, I was taking a shit bourbon mason jars. Multitasking. Nice, nice. So you just like burped them real quick and you're like, damn, I'm like Sonic, man. Nah, nah, nah. I was just multitasking. You know, that has to do with being fast. You know, you ain't wasting no time. So when I got home from work, I would grab all the crates. I'd grab like three crates and just start burping them while I'm taking a boo-boo. And, you know, I would... That's what I used to do, man. That's what I used to do. Oh, yeah. So on the on to the Wilson, man, because uh, everybody's going to ask about Wilson. But at this point, uh, how many crosses have you done with Wilson? Any guesstimation, roughly? Honestly, dude, I, I'd be lying. Gee, I'd be lying if I told you, man. Probably like 500 crosses, wow. probably 100, probably 300 probably a thousand i've done a lot it's a lot i don't know it's a lot <laughs> wow dude so it's like the number one cross strain in in history then yeah man it's like it's like a, a spaniard nice nice so yeah. is there any prospects on what might be the next wilson you know is there anything new in the works that you might you know let out wilson's wilson g wilson's wilson i've done other projects i've built other I've done so many seeds that I can pop those and find a Mel. Like, it's all just, it's, I want to work Wilson. I'll grab half of somebody else's story and add my character to it, you know? And, and then yeah. sometimes I find cool Mel's and I have my homies do side pollinations with them. So, like, I Bean Poppin has done uh, pollination with the Blissful Wizard Mel that had leaves that looked like the 32. So I told him, I'm like, yo, I got this Bee Wiz Mel. Can you do some crosses with it? I think it'll be good for you, too. So he did that. And uh, Long Beach Reefer, I had a monkey berries, which is strawberries and cream grease monkey. That was super dope. And I'm all like, dude, you should do something with this. And, you know, I've, I've had at least 20 side pollinations with Mel's that I found myself and gave to the homies, like, like on an assist. You know, like, we're hitting touchdowns. It's like, you know, we're doing field goals. And 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 other sports references 
other sports references. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. I mean, I, and it's that simple. You know, you found something that's the best, and why not? You know what I mean? You would only want to have the best, so I feel you're only working with that one. Well, well, check it out. Check it out. Before I even, like, check it out. Let me give you guys some, some like, like I've, I've said this before. It's just, like, not everybody hears everything. Like, right here, 66 people, probably only 20 of them or 15 have heard this before. But before Wilson... There was Tropicana Cherry Pie Tangy. Before Tropicana F2, I was doing Tropicana Cherry Pie Tangy hybrids, which is a line that Oni had before even Trop F2 was out, before Papaya Femmes were even popping. And I, I did Trop Cherry Pie Tangy hybrids with Warp Genetics. And uh, same thing with that one. I found that Mel, and I, and I, and I gave it to him, and he brought me back the seed stock and it was Agent Orange Tropicana Cherry Pie Tangy and Plushberry Tropicana Cherry Pie Tangy, which is some dope TGA shit times some Oni shit. And I was already Team Oni, rocking hard. How long ago was that? Like four years ago. Like four years ago. So, like, I've been doing, like, that, but that didn't really stick. I wasn't like, oh, I'm a breeder. Like, oh, I was just like, cool, like, these seeds sold. I'm going to still grow pot for myself because I was still growing for flower. I was still growing for uh, – I would make a lot of shatter. So – and and I'm just growing, and people are like, dude, like, you should make seeds and shit, you know? Like, that's basically the message I was getting. And uh, I kind of – like, with EBT, with $5 in my pocket, I would go anywhere and everywhere that had to do with weed. Like, I would make – I would make it my fucking mission. I'd be like, baby, like, give me your money. <laughs> I got to go somewhere, you know? And she'd be like, fucking maniac, like, whatever. Like, where are you going? I'm going to Chalice. This, it's, it's a two-hour and a half drive. I got this car. It might make it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like dead serious. Barely made it. <laughs> and, uh, and, like, I blew out the engine, and that's where I got my Papaya Femmes and Tropicana. And I made Castaway Trop F2. And I sold that to Oni, worked with Oni, and that's Wilson. And it's been, you know, history ever since. Yeah, it really has, man. Everybody talks about Wilson. I'm just, just nuts, man. It'll definitely go down in his, his history as uh, one of those strains that just really stand out, you know, especially, you know. I, I think, you know, people talk about that more really than anything out, you know. Well, the thing with Wilson, like, when people talk about a strain – like GMO, Wedding Cake, Blue Dream, Jack Hare, Gelato 41, uh, Tropicana F2, Mountain Trop, Papaya. You know, uh, they're talking about a cut, right? When you're talking about Wilson, you're talking about a big-ass umbrella. Because people are like, I got Wilson. Which one? Which one? <laughs> Wilson F1, Wilson F2, Wilson F3. Somebody's Wilson's Keeper Cut. A Wilson Hybrid, you know? The, the Wilson Mel that I used for the first pollination is, like, is dead. Like, I was a remedial fucking seed maker. The Wilson F, F1 female that I used to make the F2 population, new grower. Shit grower. Not shit grower, just I don't know what I'm doing. I'm new to this. I'm fucking four or five years into this shit. You know, my resources are, are limited. It's literally just me. Wilson F2. Oh, this is what you guys want? You guys want me to keep the mail. You guys want me to uh, cross it back to original clones that I kept. That's the page I'm on right now. The next page is like, it's just new pages every day. New stuff, new stuff. Yeah, for sure. So uh, how was it opening up Masonics down on Fairfax? I know that was probably a big step. I've never moved into retail myself. Uh, how was that? It, it's it's a uh, it's different, you know. Like I I never I never thought I'd have a store, let alone in Hollywood, you know. Like yeah, it's crazy. It's 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 surreal. Every weekend I get to wake up and hang out in Hollywood. Like that's fucking dope. It's crazy. I, I appreciate all the support. I never thought a million days in my life that I would be on Fairfax Avenue chilling with the homies with my dope ass merch you know yeah for sure man if i lived anywhere close to you dude i would definitely have to come down and hang out sometime 
Yeah, man, pull up. I'm in L.A. Whenever you're in L.A., come come to the store. We're on Fairfax, 369 North Fairfax Avenue. For sure, man. Well, man, it's been a good interview. Uh, you want to go ahead and plug up where they can find you and everything for my viewers and stuff? Masonics on Fairfax.com. MasonicSeeds.co. You can follow me right there. Link in bio. You can find all my shit right there. Yeah, yeah. And if you go order today, my man has some crazy bundle deals. I was giving you a shout out on my earlier live about that, dude. It's like, what, 30 bucks a pack when they buy the bundle? It's well, almost- yeah, yeah. Like, you can go get the 5 for 100 right now or the 15 for 400. They're like, yo, but Mace, why would I grab the 15 for four? It costs more. You get more. You get better selection. You get cooler beans. The the five for one hundred pool is only so big. You can only get so many from there. You know, yes. options are limited. Go grab the better one, or just grab the five for one hundred. Who cares? Just support MasonicSeeds.co. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter which pack they get. It's all fire. You know what I'm saying? So no matter what they get. What you strain know? should you buy? Grab. What do you like? You like uh, gas? You like gelatos? You like this? You like that? If I were you, I'd go buy that uh that fifteen for four hundred. If you got some some bread to spend, if you don't have some bread to spend, grab the five for one hundred. Uh, the GMO is on flash sale right now. I left it on flash sale. It's normally a hundred pack, a hundred a pack. It's only sixty right now, and there's only like fourteen left. So go lock your yours in. MasonicSeeds.co. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, I got someone to jump off here, man. We've been rolling about 40 minutes now. So that's about the time wrap for my show. But, man, I really appreciate it, dude. And, uh, you know, maybe we can get back on sometime and at least kick it. You know, we don't always have to make a show. You're a really cool dude. So, you know, I appreciate what you do for the community. I appreciate you reaching out and letting me be on the show or letting you, you know, be on my show and everything. So, uh, you know, big shout out from Two Bro Smoke. We're going to keep it real. Appreciate you, May Sonic. Keep it real, bro. Two bros, one cup. Have a good day. (laughs) Be good, bro.